Hello, welcome to Create Love Arts. My name is Sharon, and as promised, today we are going to work on the Suzette style dishcloth. And um, there's only a few things that you need. I did neglect to put it onto the pattern because uh, it's my very first pattern. I, I was bound to make some mistakes. <laughs> um, but under materials, you should have also a yarn needle for sewing in your ends. Some people put it on there, some people don't. Most people do though, and I should have put it on there. So you're gonna need your number four weight, either kitchen yard for, yarn for a dishcloth, which would be the rougher um, style cotton, or you can also use a brushed cotton for a face cloth if you prefer to do that instead. If you crochet, um, anything else these are the most adjustable patterns out there dish cloths you can if you've got a pattern count you can I'm, I'm sorry a uh, a gauge count you can actually resize just about any dish cloth into anything you want so if you find a dish cloth pattern that you really like and they have say on the notes uh, the pattern is made with 30 plus whatever stitches you can always adjust that and I explained that in my pattern reading video. When you see that kind of 30 plus whatever, or 30, mine's 30 plus one, the pattern is made in 30 stitches. So you know you can multiply that. If you made it in multiples of 30, you could go all the way up to 30, 60, 90, 120, and every single one will make it a little bit bigger. And then you just add that extra turning chain at the end. And when those when patterns have that on there it's really nice so that you can adjust um so you're going to need the yarn the four weight medium cotton i would suggest that you use 100 percent cotton but you know it's not going to be used for heat purposes like in the oven or the microwave so you technically could go with something else steer clear of acrylics though because they're not going to feel that great when they get wet they, they don't dry the same way and you can dry cotton on, you can wash and dry cotton on all the temperatures that your washer and dryer can handle. So it's just a better quality for dishes and your face than any other fiber, I think. Um, although a bamboo might actually work really, really well. Um, also, you'll need a five millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors to clip those ends, a yarn needle. Now this one is uh, just a plastic yarn needle that has the pull through. You can also use the embroidery needles that are have a wide uh, needle eye for yarns. And you can use the ones that curve or the ones that are straight. It, any of them will work. You just want to make sure that they have a big enough eye to hold that yarn. Otherwise, it's not going to be easy to get it in there. And um, I am going to suggest a stitch marker. You can also use a scrap piece of yarn because at some point you're going to want to put this down. And if you don't do it all the way through, these come in really handy. You can just slip it in your working stitch and close it up. You just slip it in to the stitch itself and close it up. And these are great. These I got uh, years ago. I'm going to assume at Hirschner's or Amazon. That's where I typically buy stuff like this. But what this one is really cool for is it has a clip on the bottom. So if I wanted to throw a piece of sticky paper with it, my yarn size or hook size on it and leave it on my project, that's really handy if you do more than one thing at a time to keep track. So a stitch marker. Uh, this is what the end result is going to look like. This is a very basic pattern using the three main stitches that I have taught in the, in the series of tutorials. The single crochet, the half double, and the double. And it's a, a repeat pattern. So we're going to do the same things in a repeat. The first thing you're always going to do when you're starting a new pattern um, of any kind typically, is you're going to make a chain. So grab that yarn, and we're going to look at our pattern. And in the beginning, it says, to begin, chain 31. 
So that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna chain 31. We're gonna make our slip knot, wrap it around your fingers into a, an X at the top, grab the X, drop the back, pull it off your fingers still holding the X. You'll see the yarn is behind the circle. Grab that yarn with your hook. You can drop both sides and grab the two ends and just pull to tighten. Now remember, you don't want this so tight that you can't adjust it and move it up and down. Make sure that you leave yourself a little bit of room here. When you are chaining, you can go pretty loose with the chain, just not too, too loose. Um, and if you're having trouble with them being too tight, your chains being too tight to work into, just go up a hook size or two, depending on, on how tight those chains are coming out for you. And that's the best tip I can give you. Until you learn how to f adjust that tension properly, it's just easier to go up a couple of hook sizes. So then we're going to wrap our yarn with our hand, pinky, pointer, and pinch, and we're going to chain 31. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30, 31. Now, if I did that too quickly, you are more than welcome to pause my video and catch up at the end. Just catch up. So I did 31. That one is our turning chain. Now, my first row says working into the second stitch from your hook and using the back bump of your chain, single crochet into each stitch across. So we've got our turning chain here. We're going to flip that over just like we did when we were practicing those stitches. We're going to go into the second chain. So that bump in the back is where we're going to go. And we're going to skip that first one and go right into the second one. And put your hook in, wrap your yarn around the hook and pull it through. You'll have two loops, wrap your yarn, pull through both. That is our first single crochet. You're going to single crochet yourself all the way to the end on this on this first row. This is a nice base so that if you choose not to do a border at some point, the single crochet row leaves it nice and bordered. It's the edges that you're going to want to border. And that's why most people prefer a border. So we're just going to single crochet right along keep going I like to pull my yarn out a bit as I'm going it's a little bit of start and stop sometimes and that's okay just make sure your yarns not splitting like that one almost did on me when you're going through that back bump cotton does tend to do that a little bit more than others um, but again it's it's a, a good sturdy yarn to start with it keeps things you know, clean and crisp when you're making the stitches, but also it, it's a little sturdier to hold on to than some of the others. And going right along. So in through the bump, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. In through the bump, yarn over, pull through two. And see, I just kind of skipped right over the other yarn over because it gets pretty quick when you've been practicing it. And I will, I also want to point out as we're going along here, speed is not everything in crochet. Speed comes later. I used to get so disappointed that it took me so long to do anything at the beginning when I'd start a new project and I'd think, wow, this is taking forever. But it, it only feels that way sometimes. Sometimes you're faster than you think you are. And again, speed comes with time. You know, the more patient you patience and grace you give yourself, the easier this is going to feel. Just remember you're learning. You're not, you don't, nobody's ever perfect at something the, 
perfect at something the very first time they do it. And if they are, sometimes that's just dumb luck. So keep that in mind and give yourself some some grace and kudos for trying something new. It Anything takes practice. So we are two stitches away from the end on mine. Again, if I am going too quickly, please feel free to pause the video and just jump back in wherever you um, are at at that moment. So I'm on my last bump. Remember, that is the slip stitch right here. So when you pull on, when you put your hook through that bump, it's going to loosen that stitch a lot. We'll just tighten it up at the end and just make sure you're going through that back bump there. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. There's my bumpy stitch and you just, just pull, just pull it. You can adjust as you go. I'm at an awkward angle. Sorry about that. Just pull it. You can mess with it. Now what you want to do is pull that stitch. You can pop it up here. Set your hook down. Give this a count, okay? Make sure you're not counting that turning chain down here. That's the turning chain. I don't know if you can see that little guy there. That little V down here counts as part of the chain. You don't count that. It's the top stitches and you want to count the V's. So we have one, two. I'm going to count by twos because I hate counting singly through this. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29, 30. I got 30. Yay, I did it. So now we get the hook back in there, pinky pointer pinch, and we turn our work. That is the next step on row one is turn your work. We have 30 stitches total. We can go straight on to row two. Now row two is a repeat row. We repeat row two from two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So six times you're gonna do this row. You'll get pretty good at this row because you're gonna do it six times in a row. Um, the very first direction is to chain one then HDC into the first stitch. So we're going to chain one. HDC, HDC, sorry about that, stands for double half double crochet. So you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook first for a half double. Go into that very first hole there next to your loop. Make sure that you have the V stitch on the top for that particular stitch. Wrap your hook again and pull it through. You have one, two, three loops on your hook. Wrap your yarn and pull through all three of those loops for a half double. First stitch acquired. We are moving right along. Now it says to skip the next stitch. That literally means jump right over this stitch here. You don't want to go in that next one. The next direction is to SC and then also DC into the very next stitch. They are listed in the order that you're supposed to do them. In every pattern that has a multiple in a stitch, they will tell you which one comes first and last. Just by the order that it's written on that page, you, have, you should do it that way. You can do it the other way, but it will not look the way the pattern is intended to look. So... We're going to take our hook and go straight in. We're not going into this stitch. That's a skip stitch. We're not going to go in there. We're going to go into the next stitch. We're going to do a single crochet there. And then we're not going anywhere else. We're going to wrap that hook, go same stitch right into that same hole. Wrap it again. Three loops on the hook. Wrap it and go through two wrap and go through the last two. So now we have a single and a double crochet in that one stitch. The very next thing we do, it says skip the next stitch. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to skip. On my pattern, it says repeat from star to star all the way down the, to the last two stitches. From this, from this particular start where we did the single crochet and the double crochet that's where it starts then we're going to skip and we're going to do the same thing in the very next stitch skip that one then we're going to single crochet and then double into that very same stitch and that's our pattern 
over and over, that's what you're going to do. Skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next available stitch, and then double crochet in that same stitch. And again, be careful with your tension. I just noticed mine was getting a little off. Loosen up. If it starts feeling like you're struggling with it, loosen it. Skip that stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, double right behind it in the same stitch. Okay, skip, single, double, skip, single, double. You're going to do this all the way until the last two stitches. When you get to the last two stitches, there is a different method from the repeat is over at that point. You have to do something a little bit different. Not much different, just a little. So skip the next stitch, go in as a single, then a double in the same stitch, over and over. Skip, single, then a double. And again, if I'm going too quick, you'll just start doing it. After a while, notice I didn't even say skip. I just started going right into this, the exact right hole because you just, you're doing it over and over again. Your hand starts to muscle memory the whole thing. So skip, single crochet, double crochet in the same stitch. And again, skip, single, double. And that's the repeat. That's all you're going to do. You're going to do this for six rows. Boy, will you have some serious practice with these stitches at the end of this. <laughs> but it's the best way to give your hand that muscle memory. And a lot of it is muscle memory. Once you have taught your fingers what and hands what to do, your brain follows right along. It'll just do it. And we all make mistakes. Sometimes you have to pull it out. Sometimes, you know, you went backwards. You were looking at something else, doing something. Your, your brain wasn't quite clicking into what you were doing. I, I have to tell you, it happens to me all the time. Best part about crochet, real easy to pull that back out and start it over again. When you do that, though, there is kind of a, a fun term. Um... I'm at the last three stitches. Hold on. Did I do something wrong? Nope. Nope, I did it right. As you get to that last three, let's just stop and go back and look real quick. That's your base chain and your first row. All looking pretty. Now you'll notice that single crochet turns into a total V and the double crochet lays down. It lays itself down. When you put things in two stitches in the same hole, different things happen. And that is really fun to experiment with. So you're welcome. I mean, just play with it. Put a, a double in, you know, on another thing, clearly not on this project, but you can mess around with stitches and see what happens to them. This one changes the dynamic and the way it looks. That's all crochet is, is just putting it in different uh, variations. So now from here, we're going to skip this. You're going to go straight in and do another single crochet and a double crochet in the second to the last hole stitch. Okay, now that is different from the pattern because at this point we should be skipping another stitch, but we're not going to. It's the end. Instead of skipping one, we're just going to wrap our yarn and do an, a half double crochet right in that. Now look, this, this stitch is odd. It doesn't look like it should be, but it is a stitch. So you see that loop on top? That's how you know it's a for real stitch. So put your hook right in there. Make sure you have that V on top. Wrap your yarn for the half double and pull it all the way through all three 
to close your half double. And that's it. Now, I suggest you count every row on this just because you're learning. If you've done this before and you're just along for the ride of the pattern, oop, oop, sorry about that. If you're just along for the pattern and, uh, you know, seeing how I am doing it myself, then you don't have to count every. But I would suggest that you start, that you, you try to count every other at least just so that you keep it on track. Otherwise, you'll start getting veer, it'll veer off on one side or the other. And that's typical, that's normal, it happens. So um, again, I count from the top on these because there are mixed stitches and you can't see them very clearly separately. It's best to count from up here. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. That's it. That is the second row. Now, you it says right on, turn your work. And you're going to repeat that this row over and over again six times. So chain one, half double. Now, when you turn this over, you see how the stitches start to it looks like this one's not lined up with that. It is, I'm pulling it, okay? Make sure you're going into that very first hole here. It might look a little bit smaller and different because it's a half double instead of these two. So make sure you're going into the right one. You're going into the same stitch that you just made, that half double. So you chain one, you wrap your hook, go into that very first stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through all three to make your half double. And here we go again. Skip the next stitch. Go into the very, the third, well, that would be the third stitch. So skip that one, go into that one. Now what I want you to notice before I go into that stitch, here's my half double from the back, my double and my single, okay? That single crochet stitch, see how it's a deeper V? That's the stitch you're gonna do them in not the, the tall one, the little one that made a big hole. That's where we're going in. So that's one way to keep track of yourself. Um, you're gonna skip the double and go into that single stitch and do another single and a double in that same stitch. And all the way down, you're gonna do the same thing. Skip the double, go into that single down below. Oops, go into the single. You're gonna do this until you hit row seven. When you're done with row seven, then we're gonna go on to the very next part. And that's the end of the repeat for the whole pattern. But um, it's, it's technically very simple. This stitch is literally called the Suzette stitch. Uh, I don't know the history behind that, but my guess is as good as yours and it's just a pretty stitch that has a nice texture to it. And it has a little detail that when you're first beginning, I think it's it's important that you learn to make something pretty fairly quickly. And that's just my opinion, but I noticed that more people are willing to stick with it if they're making the things they like. I had run a poll on my Facebook page about what most people are interested in learning to crochet. And the top answers were surprising to me, actually. I love making blankets, and blankets was number one. And there are so many variations. You can do them flat like this. I will also teach how to make a granny square. That's my uh, goal, is to teach some of the bigger pattern stitches. Sorry about that. I gotta move my hands down. Let me adjust this camera because I think that's part of the trouble. It's in the way. Um, but my my goal is to teach you the different things you can do with crochet. And the second thing that was popular were stuffies and toys. In crochet, stuffies are called something different. They're called, and I hope I'm not butchering the name, they're called amigurmi or amig yeah, I would say amigurmi. It's a strange little name, but it's basically stuffed animals. And I 
I have made a couple. They are not my favorite thing to do. And they're not my favorite, not because I find them technically difficult. They're not. The problem I have with it is in making stuffies, amigurumi, if you will, you have to use, you can use this kind of yarn, just like this, exactly this yarn, which is fantastic because it's, you know, easily available. It's not expensive. However, you use a hook size one to two down from what the yarn asks you to use. And you need to pull your stitches extremely tight because you don't want your stuffing when you stuff the animal. You don't want that poking through. Now, you can line it with, I don't know, people use different things, but you can line them. And it's just very difficult on my hands to do that. I will attempt to show you how to begin one, but the rules on amigurumi stuffed animals are a little different and you have to do increases and that's okay. They're not difficult to do. It's just that they're different than flat work or even granny squares or these round designs from the middle. That's how these are done. It's from the middle, not flat like this. So that's my two cents. Um, real quick, we are at the last two stitches. So I actually, I'm at the last stitch, not the last two. I went, I jumped right on ahead. You're going to wrap that yarn and put it in. Now, I'm not sure that I did that right, but we're going to count and make sure because I was talking. So I'm going to do that half double there and then give it a quick count. Sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, four, six, eight, and thirty. No, I did it right. Okay, so that remember that last single crochet and double crochet Suzette stitch will go right next to the half double, and that's why I stopped it on uh, the pattern and said and, and made it a separate line there. I made it a separate line because you would typically skip a stitch here and you're not gonna, you're gonna put that half double in there instead. All right, so that is row three done. Oops, holding it up too high, sorry about that. That is row three. So you see how quickly this builds with the uh, grouped up stitches. I wanna point this out as well. This will happen, especially if I, if you make a single crochet a little too loose on the row below. I'm okay with that. It's a dishcloth. Don't get too technical with this. These things will happen. If you are working on a bigger project and you know, you're know you gifting it to someone and you're like, oh my gosh, that hole is driving me cray cray. I need to get rid of it. Rip it out. That's called, in the crochet world, ripping it out is called frogging it because you rib it. Rib it, rib it, rib it. So, if you wanted to rip that out, go back all the way to this crochet stitch here and fix it with a little bit better tension, go ahead. If not, it's a dish cloth or a face cloth. Who cares? Enjoy the process. Don't worry about the small mistakes. I know there are some, also some uh, people who believe, there are some superstitions that believe that you should put one error, at least one error into anything that you hand make, uh, especially in crochet and the yarn arts. And there are different, you know, there are different views on why, but basically because it, you always put a piece of your soul and your love into whatever you're doing. And that little mistake can let your um, soul escape if it needs to. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the stories I've heard. There's a couple. I'm going to turn my work. I'm just going to keep going in the pattern. I'm on row three. You can be on a different row. That's okay. Um, and again, we're, we're just following right along. Half double first. At, always at the beginning and the end, you'll have a half double. And then you skip one and go into that seat, right into that single crochet from before. So mistakes, to me, I think they're, they give it personality. They make it look a little, not so perfect. So that's a good thing to me. I, I don't believe in perfection. I think, you know, we all, 
live and grow and perfect doesn't exist anywhere in the world, nature or otherwise. So give yourself some grace. If you make a mistake, if it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it to, try again. Not a big deal. I think we put too much burden on ourselves to be perfect all the time. This is one place where you just, this is for fun. It's to relax. It's to enjoy something beautiful and to make something with your own two hands. Let it be the art that it is and allow it to be imperfect. And again, that's just my two cents. So I'm just going along, skipping a stitch single crochet, double crochet in the same stitch, making that Suzette pattern all the way across. Now I'm trying to keep track of where I'm at. I usually use my row counter app for all my projects because it keeps track for me. All I have to do is either A, hit the um, plus sign to up my rows or B, say something like next, next step, I think. And it will add the count to the counter for me so I know what row I'm on at all times. I do appreciate that. Because sometimes you get interrupted and you forget what you were doing. And sometimes like these patterns, it can get a little bit difficult to see exactly how many rows you've done. Um, I'll go real quick and show you how I count them. And it depends on what I'm doing as to how I'm going to count that. And that's experience. You will learn that over time and through experience. So don't fuss too much about it. It'll be all right. Also, if you printed out my pattern or any pattern and you find yourself not needing it, you don't want an app, you want to do it all by hand, that's okay too. Take your pattern, grab yourself a pencil and just make marks. You can make little tally marks to show which row you're on and it'll give your hand break a break too as you're going along if you if you choose to do that so I'm on my last on this one too so I'm just gonna keep going and finish off my six rows I think I'm on four now I'm gonna try to count this for you so there's my first row down here that is my single crochet row I can tell because all those stitches are the same and they line right up with the V and then the next row goes this way that's row two row three and row four and that's that so two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty two twenty four twenty six twenty eight and thirty then I turn my work and start all over again I have two more rows to go of this and whether you do or not it's it's fine if you're still on the first or second row pause it you can catch up with me later. It's, I'm always available. <laughs> it's one of the best parts about this. I am available. Did I go in the right? Let me look here. This is where you have to be careful. See, I went in between the stitches here. See that hole there? That's between the stitches. This is the actual stitch. Okay, make sure you don't do that. I didn't look for the V on top and I knew it right away because it looked different. That's something you really need to watch. If it looks different than what you've been doing, double check it. Look again. You might be surprised by the silly things you end up doing when you're not thinking that you can do silly things anymore. You do. We all make mistakes. So there we have it. We have, I have two more rows to go. You have however many you have. Um, and then we're just going to do the last repeat and that's it for, all right. So I am chaining one and turning for my last row of the Suzette part two to seven. This is my seventh row. I'm going to do that half double. I'm going to get across this row and then we are going on to the second part of this pattern repeat. Really simple second part. You're literally going to single crochet across the row three full times. So that gives your hand a break from doing all these other crazy stitches. And your brain a break because now you know you're just going into each single hole. You don't have to skip anything. I like patterns that change it up a bit. 
throughout. Uh, I get bored easily, easily, but also I I find it it's a break for my hands. You get tired of doing the same thing over and over again. My hands get tired of doing it, and it just the different movements between the stitches helps. Now I am doing singles here, but the doubles, you know, give a different motion. And so do the half doubles. So as we get to the end here, again, you're just going to keep skipping and, you know, doing your single crochet and double crochet Suzette stitch right in that one singular space. And we're going to do a half double at the end when we get there and turn our work just like always. Now, again, if you are new to pattern building and crocheting in general, it is important that you do count your rows as often as possible. Uh, count those stitches across the row. Make sure you're where you think you are because these last holes, man, they can trip you up up sometimes. In fact, I think I'll post on my Facebook page the very first piece I ever attempted after having not known how to, not doing it for a really long time. And I was so proud of it until I realized what I had done. And you'll see what I had done. I did not count and it really showed. <laughs> so I'm going to turn my work. Now we're working on the, from row eight to 10, you're going to just chain one, go straight into that first stitch that you did the half double in and do a single crochet. Make sure that you're hitting the all of the stitches, the double, the single, all the way across. Now you don't have to hit any skip stitches because we put two in the same hole. So that skip stitch was already well accounted for along the way on each one of them. So you're just going to single crochet crochet along the row and you're going to do this for three full rows. That is the pattern repeat. You're going to do six rows of the Suzette stitch and three rows of the single crochet on each repeat. And you're going to do this one, two, you're going to do this another time and then you're going to end doing the Suzette stitch six more times and then one single row of single crochet. And in our next video, what I'll do, I'm going to try and film it one right after the other here, but I, I want to separate it so that it's not too big for you. Uh, in the next video, we are going to finish off the piece. I'm going to show you how to slip stitch to close it and how to tie it off and how to weave in those ends after you make a border. And the border is not necessary, but I do find it to make things just, you know, it neatens it up a bit, makes it look really pretty. So once I've counted and made sure that I have 30 across, I'm gonna turn my work, chain one, and start again. We're just gonna single crochet in each one of those stitches all the way across for this row and the next one and that will be our three rows and it just gives it a neat little detail in the middle or on the third of it and it separates out the monotony for your hands so that's why I like doing it this way and I think they come out better I think they'll look cool like that if you like something simpler and you don't want the detail in it and you don't like the way the single crochet look row looks, don't do it. Just keep going with the pattern. Make it all one big Suzette style dishcloth. That's fine too. In this particular pattern, I was just uh, playing around with these stitches, trying to figure out what would best suit what we were learning. And this happened to stand out as I was going along as something easy to teach that gives you a couple of different uh, skills like skipping stitches and doing two stitches in the same stitch for a pattern. And these are things you will see as you go along in your pattern reading world, in your crochet journey, I guess you'd say. Last row for me, 
Um, again, if I'm going way too quick, which I probably am if you're new, then just pause until you catch up to where I'm at. Or at this point, you're probably good to go because uh, you know that we're just going to repeat. So I'm just going to finish this row and start the next so that anyone who is a little unsure of what to do once they hit that third row of single crochet can follow right along and figure it out along the way. I think crochet should be a nice relaxing thing. And if it's not relaxing you, put it down, walk away. I don't know how many times I've had a project that has frustrated me to no end. My brain, I couldn't wrap my brain around it or everything was going wrong that could go wrong even though I was doing fine, just things weren't working out for me that day. I would say I'm, I'm just going to put this in time out for now. And I throw things in time out all the time. Unfortunately, a little too often, and then I have to remember to go back to them. But just set it down. Walk away. I teach that to my kids. If you're getting you know, overly frustrated by something, go get some fresh air. Put it down. Walk outside. Touch grass. Do whatever you got to do. It matters. Your brain needs that break if you're getting frustrated. But all right, I'm at the end of that single crochet journey we just took. And again, it was only three rows. And as you look, you can see that the difference already. And I also wanted to point out this for the Suzette stitch, which I should have said earlier and didn't. If you notice, that row, as you're looking at the rows, some go this way and some go this way. And you can see that's each row. If they're going this way and this way. So that's how you can count them pretty simply. We know these are the straight rows. That's my single crochet row. These stitches are tilted this way. That's one row. The next row, you can see these ones are tilted this way. And we're this way again. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of that. Because those ones are going this way and those ones are going that way. That's seven. And then one, two, three rows of that single crochet. Okay. So now just in case anybody is struggling with how to wrap in their mind around how to go from uh, row 11 to 16 and then onward, you just turn your work just like before. You're going to start just like you did for every other Suzette style row. And you're going to chain one, half double in that very first single crochet there. Here you go. Skip single and a double into that same hole and off you go again skip it single double all right so i'm gonna leave you there i'm gonna work my way all the way up to the end so that i will be where you are when you come back for the next video to finish off this pattern and do the border